I don't know if any specific members were targeted, but uh, it's hard to imagine he didn't know what he was doing. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kirk Montgomery. A Michigan native is among the victims shot during a baseball practice for congressional Republicans today. Matt Micah, who previously worked for Congress Congressman Tim Wahlberg, was shot multiple times when a gunman opened fire in Alexandria, Virginia this morning. He is said to be in critical condition right now. Four others were shot, including Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise, who was also in critical condition following his surgery. Two Capitol Police officers and a lobbyist were also wounded. Three Michigan Republican congressmen were at that ball field, including Mike Bishop, John Molinar, and Jack Bergman. U.S. Representative Mike Bishop says many more people would have been shot if security staff hadn't returned fire. President Trump has expressed his support and urged unity in the wake of today's shooting. Please take a moment today to cherish those you love and always remember those who serve and keep us safe. God bless them all. The shooter has now been identified as 66-year-old James T. Hodgkinson of Illinois. Hodgkinson has a history of arrests in recent years, including arrests for battery, resisting arrest, and drunk driving. Friends of his reacted to the news today, saying they don't know what his motive may have been, but he was fed up with politics. I just want to let people know that he wasn't evil, that he was I guess tired of some of the politics are going on. We will have much more on today's shooting coming up a little bit later in this newscast, including additional comments from President Trump, as well as reaction from members of Congress. The death toll from the fire at a London apartment building has doubled since this morning. At last check, 12 people have died and 79 others injured. The manager of the 24-story, 120-unit public housing complex says it's too early to speculate what caused the inferno and what continued to make it spread. One witness spoke to NBC's Bill Neely comparing the fire to when the World Trade Centers were hit on 9-11. You can hear the screeching, you hear the screaming, people falling down, and you see the lights pop up, you see the silhouettes, and next minute you see the flame come in, you don't see the silhouettes. That building had recently undergone a nearly $13 million renovation. Britain's government has since ordered checks at buildings that have gone through similar renovations amid concerns that what contributed to that deadly fire. Mr. Lyon failed in his responsibilities to protect the health and safety of citizens of Flint. After allegedly being informed of the growing Legionella situation in Flint, Nick Lyon failed to inform the public of this health threat, a threat which cost the life of Robert Skidmore. The state's top health director charged with involuntary manslaughter today. As you just heard there, attorney Bill Schutte says Nick Lyon had a duty to protect public health and failed. Schutte is also accusing Lyon of having a hand in the cover-up of the Legionnaire's outbreak by repeatedly attempting to prevent a researcher from looking into the cause. Lyon isn't the only one facing involuntary manslaughter charges. Four others were charged today, including Darnell Early, Flint's emergency manager, when the city switched its water source from Detroit to the Flint River. Schutte says he contributed to the decisions that caused Skidmore's death by keeping the river as the water source, even as it became obvious it should not have been switched back. Former Director of Public Works for Flint, Howard Croft, has also been criminally charged in the investigation. In addition to the involuntary manslaughter charge filed today, he's also been charged with false pretenses and conspiracy for forcing the city to switch its source even though the water treatment plant wasn't ready. The former head of Michigan's drinking water office, who has also been previously charged, was also named today. Lane Skeeter Smith was fired back in February and charged with misconduct in office and willful neglect of duty in the investigation last summer for not shutting down the treatment plant after it failed to produce safe water. The fourth person to be charged with involuntary manslaughter is the former DEQ water supervisor. The AG's office says Stephen Bush was made aware of the outbreak, yet represented to the public that Flint's drinking water was safe. He was previously charged with misconduct in office, tampering with evidence, conspiracy, and two misdemeanors for violating the state's Safe Water Drinking Act. 
Attorney General Bill Schutte is also charging the chief executive of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Eden Wells. She's being charged with obstruction of justice and lying to a peace officer, accused of withholding funding for programs to help the victims of the crisis and then lying to an investigator. Despite the charges announced today, Governor Rick Snyder says he still supports his top executives, Wells and Lyon. The governor says both are presumed innocent and will remain on duty at the Department of Health and Human Services. Schutte also said today he knows people will ask why he is not filing charges against the governor. He says criminal charges will only be filed when evidence of probable cause to commit a crime has been established. Our criminal investigation of the water crisis in Flint has been and will always be about one system of justice. Accountability and responsibility are the cornerstones of our mission. Our charge is to determine what laws, if any, may have been broken, and if so, to hold violators of the law responsible. I owe that to the citizens of Flint. We all owe that to the citizens of Flint. 100 people total contracted Legionnaire's disease in 2014 and 2015. 12 died. We'll hear from Flint's Mayor Karen Weaver coming up on News 10 at 5 o'clock.